Letters from Yorkshire by Maura Dooley first appeared in the collection Sound Barrier in 2002. In this poem, the poet describes how she receives letters from a male correspondent who lives many miles distant in Yorkshire. His letters describe his life which is spent outside gardening in all weathers and the changes in nature he observes. Her life, by contrast, is spent indoors, in front of a computer, writing. Dooley uses this poem to explore the relationship between two people who are separated, not only by distance, but also by differing occupations. She does not mention the other person by name and the nature of their relationship. Whether they are family, lovers or friends is not explained. Although apart, they nevertheless remain spiritually and emotionally connected through their correspondence. Words and images throughout the poem, such as letters, singing, write to me, heart full of headlines, feeding words onto a blank screen, sends me word, envelope, news and tap out messages, form a semantic field of communication. The poet explores the contrasting worlds of rural and urban life and the way in which she perhaps feels that the demands of modern life and technology disconnect us from what is real. The poem has five stanzas of three lines each. The poet does not make use of end rhyme and there is no formal base metre. Continuity is maintained through the use of internal rhyme, assonance and alliteration and the rhythms underlying ordinary speech are maintained through the use of enjambment, both within and across stanzas. Enjambment across stanza breaks also connects the ideas within them over space and distance. The stanzas are separate and yet connected, as are the people in the poem, and allows the ideas expressed in simple, informal language to flow in a smooth and harmonious manner. The title, Letters from Yorkshire, is interesting in that it alludes to the place, rather than the person, that the letters are from. This deliberate shift in focus could be an indication that the poet wishes to communicate the idea that her correspondent is so much a part of the landscape in which he lives that he has become its mouthpiece. The first time that the speaker's correspondent is mentioned, she uses the personal pronoun he. Whilst we may not know who this man is or what his relationship is with the speaker, we do know that he is connected to the land as he does physical work in the garden and experiences the changing of the seasons at first hand. The poem begins in the past tense, which recalls a particular event that inspired him to write to her. In February, digging his garden, planting potatoes, he saw the first lapwings return and came indoors to write to me. Lapwings are crested birds with white and green-tinted black plumage. Their flocks begin to break up in February in order to return to their breeding grounds. So for the man, they are a harbinger of spring, and this news is worthy of his immediately interrupting his work to write to let her know. The emotional connection that the speaker feels with this man is evident in the minute details that she is able to imagine. She portrays him as a character who is at one with nature, even in the bitterly cold weather. When he comes inside and his cold hands react to the warmth of the house by reddening, the poet uses personification to describe the way in which his knuckles sing. The image is one of joy and celebration rather than the pain we would normally associate with this. Note also the use of internal rhyme in this first stanza, with the words digging, planting, lapwings and singing, to give it a sense of cohesion. The switch in focus in the second stanza is signalled by the change from the past tense to the present, as the speaker begins to explore the nature of their relationships with their environments. She is matter-of-fact as she simply states, it's not romance, simply how things are. Note that this line is one single sentence which is end-stopped to pause the rhythm. 
It is also ambiguous. Does she mean that their relationship is not romance, or that the contents of his letter are not a romanticisation? The phrase, simply how things are, would tend to suggest the latter interpretation, because if you do not romanticise something, you simply tell it how it is. She also switches from the third person to the second person to address her correspondent directly. This makes the tone of the poem much more intimate. She goes on to juxtapose their different lives. He is out there in the cold, seeing the seasons turning. Note how the poet uses both alliteration and assonance to harmoniously link the words to convey the way in which she believes him to be at one with nature. This idea is further echoed by the enjambment which carries the meaning of the line smoothly over the stanza break. Whilst he is of the outdoor physical world, she, by contrast, is of the indoor cerebral world as she, with her heart full of headlines, feeds words onto a blank screen. Note how she uses alliteration again here to link the words heartful and headlines. Instead of harmony, though, the words she links, alluding to the heart and the head, are often seen as being in opposition to one another. Is this an indication of an inner conflict she feels about the authenticity of her own life? There are also implied parallels between his world and hers. The bare, perhaps snowy soil into which he plants potatoes, and the white, blank screen onto which she feeds words. The word blank might also suggest the artificiality and inauthenticity she feels about her own life. She explores the nature of reality using the rhetorical question, Is your life more real because you dig and sow? She wonders if his life is more real because he engages in physical labour and experiences nature at first hand, while she is removed from life as she constructs it through words on her computer screen. This is the first stanza that the poet end stops, as she pauses to wonder whether his life is intrinsically more real because he has a physical rather than a cerebral connection with life. She acknowledges that he would not say so. He would not agree that his life is more real simply because he does unpleasant menial chores, such as breaking ice on a water butt and clearing a path through snow. Note that the poet maintains cohesion between stanzas with the use of the homophone so and so, the sounds of which are picked up in the internal rhyme snow in the next line. She feels that she is at a distance from nature, as she only finds out about it, second-hand, when he sends word of that other world. The innate lyricism that she finds in his letters is evoked by the way in which the sounds in word and world almost match. Her reference to that other world implies that her world is urban, as she appears to be so far removed from his own. The poet creates a feeling of an abundance of purity in the metaphor pouring air and light into an envelope to describe the reinvigorating experiences that his welcome letters generate. The poem ends with an image of them at night watching the same news in different houses, while their souls tap out messages across the icy miles. This metaphor, which evokes the idea of Morse code, suggests that even though they are physically apart, their taking part in the same activity simultaneously allows them to make a spiritual connection across the distance. Thanks for watching. I'd really appreciate any questions or comments below. I look forward to hearing from you.